I will read you some poems from the book, which just came out um, last month. Does it still feel really weird in the book? It kind of does, yeah. yeah. It feels a little bit weird, though I've, um, though I've sort of written these poems over the last five, six years, so I, I know them very well. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's different to sort of know them together, one after the other, in a book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this, this first poem is called, uh, This is Not a Personal Poem. This is not a personal poem. I don't write about my life. I don't have a life. I don't have sex. I have not experienced death. Don't take this personally, but I don't have any feelings either. The feelings I don't have don't run my life. I have an imagination. I'm imagining it now. This poem is concerned with language on a very plain level. This poem stole that line from John Ashbery. This poem wants you to like it. Please click like. This poem was written during a recession. I'm so politically conscious the word politics is in my poem. This is not a New York poem. There's not enough room for all the wars in this poem. Gay marriage is now in this poem. Have you liked this poem yet? It was written in 2011 in New York and posted 11 minutes ago. Would you sleep with the poet who wrote this poem? Would you buy his book? Click here. This poem loves language. This poem has slept with other poems written by poets who love language. All poets love language. Let's talk about language while people die. This poem cares a lot, but wants you to think that it doesn't really care. The speaker of this poem may have been born in a former communist country. It may or may not matter. I had an orgasm before writing this poem. I have my sunglasses on while reading this poem. Everyone is going to die. Please don't take it personally. The world, the world. The world is blood hot and personal. I stole that line from Sylvia Plath. Put your money on this poem. I love the money shot. This is not a personal poem. This poem is only about Alex Dimitrov. Uh, so, so sort of um, the book, a lot of the poems in the book are, um, are interested um, in, um, in themselves um, as poems uh, and also um, in uh, thinking about identity um, and persona and um, uh, sort of uh, origins, lack of origins. Um, and um, this next one is called, This is a Personal Poem. My self self is thinking about itself, trying to sell itself a new self. Don't worry, reader. I'm not trying to fool you with language. I have eyes to do that with. I have forgotten our history. I have forgotten how we met. Reader, are you upset at how fast we're moving? I'm likely with you in your bed, between your hands, somewhere in your mouth before whatever it is you'll say next. Say yes and now and love too. Say, what did Judith Butler say when saying, one is undone in the face of the other by the touch by the scent, by the feel, by the prospect of the touch, by the memory of the feel. I want to know you, reader. I want to know a lot of things. Can we ever truly forget about ourselves? Is every self a self that makes itself available to love? Like death and its kind availability. Like language, reader. Would we still be so unhappy if we could escape it? To name the namelessness that is love in what we read, in what we see, and what our feelings really, facts or flaws. Or something tells me now that I must leave you, reader. It's not you, it's me. We guess at why things end. We ruin things. We start and stall. And all, all, all we do is want. strange to sort of figure out what to read. 
um, the, the book sort of moves from thinking about um, America um, kind of uh, broadly and specifically and personally in the beginning to uh, a lot of um, love poems in the middle, some breakup poems. It's sort of hard to distinguish what a love poem is and what a breakup poem is, um, or at least for me. <clears throat> so I'll read some of the love poems or breakup poems. This is called The Composer's Lover. We had an hour without music, a nerve brightly turning in a closed room of the mind, the heart's black pool, a word that expired into the air and woke everything. Your bed slid under an invisible knife. What happened to us after meeting when the right note claimed Manhattan's May morning like an elegy already moving through the living? Today, we are among them, here to unsettle each other, to undress beside the piano, elegant and unmistakably his. Once it has you, there is a mouth that never releases, a faint circle in a field of rust hanging on the wall. We are not there, we are in our bodies, like teeth marks in a shirt you once saw falling off him, the delicate taste of blood that passed between us before lust, before anyone could forgive us. And this poem's called Bloodletting. Um, last week, uh, I was at a reading for, um, um, for the poet Mary Jo Bang. I don't know if you guys know her. She just translated Dante's Inferno. And she was saying how um, every poet has sort of words that they use over and over again. Um, and how she had noticed her own words that she uses over and over again um, after reading one of her uh, first books. And um, she, had, she had sort of noticed this in a friend of hers' work as well. And she had said to her, you know, I, I love all the silver and uh, blue in your, in your um in your work, or what does it mean? And she had said, um, lack of rigor. So, uh, <laughs> so I sort of feel the same way, looking back on these. Um, I just thought, had this thought as I was, you know, turning the page, deciding what to read, um, how this sort of poem ends on blood, and the next one's called Bloodletting, so, um, lack of rigor. The gods have no choice but to let us live a little. They would die for comedy. You and I today were like bad actors in a black and white Fellini movie. If you can't show red, why bother filming? The scene where the boys undress and color the river with sex is useless, like bloodletting. And the pistons of the heart, the heart, aren't pumping fast enough to let us feel this thrashing. There's also a series of um, self-portraits that um, I rarely read. Um, I was telling my friend Rachel before that I rarely read them because they're very quiet poems. They're sort of very intimate, and they don't really work well, um, I think, standing in front of people. But I'm not, so I'll read them for you, <laughs> since, um, since I rarely get to sit down and read. Um, this, um, there's three of them. The first one is a self-portrait of uh, the French actress Brigitte Bardot. The second one is a, um, is a portrait of uh, Daisy Buchanan from The Great Gatsby. And um, the third one is a self-portrait of Brett from Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises. So this is um, self-portrait as Daisy in The Great Gatsby. When I walk in, he is playing Chopin. Balcony doors open, drinks thinning in ice. Outside, an ambulance carries someone. I sit in the chair next to the piano to study how his face changes before the coda. Why does it feel easier to live during a sonata? In our letters, there are too many hard vowels between us. I always watch for the longest day of the year and then miss it. It is early in the century and all the men are late. I wait for everyone to leave the party, for the music to end, to feel 
the last note. Blue curtains. That day we were in a room with blue curtains. Every time I wanted to speak, some hand would lift that pale, translucent fabric, and I'd see him standing on the circular balcony, which held something old and shapeless. It was late morning. We were already late for everything. So I stood at one end of the room and watched him, and between us was a bed and a table and things in a hotel, you know, things that are anonymous and belong to no one, like a sea or a life. And all I remember is how expensive it was. Not the room, but the feeling. Self-portrait without the self. And so really, um, when I'm not writing about myself, I'm sort of telling you that I'm not writing about myself like in this poem. On the edges of the body is where I stood, trying to feel my way to the center. For years, it was all I wanted. Clawing at the small cells, kicking in the bones to make room for something more permanent. And this morning, tired of my lips, the way my hair will sometimes tilt to one side, a lover of extremes, Every part of me slanted as if toward another body. I no longer want the center, this heart, or what's in it. I want what is in mine and what will not last. And yes, your heart will not last. <laughs>